My name is Cold Beer, and let's start with Deep Galactic. This is a 1 to 4 players first person shooter featuring badass space dwarfs and 100% destructible environments. Here you can play alone or work together with other players as a team to dig, explore and fight your way through a massive cave system filled with hordes of deadly enemies and valuable resources. Pick some powerful guns like flamethrowers, gatling guns, portable platform launchers and show those puny aliens who's the boss. Dwarfs may be small, but they are really powerful. We in Lithuania have a saying. Neologis. Or smoogies. Meaning not the size, but the punch is what really matters. And your punch is really you know, probably weak in real world, but really impactful for the alien population in these dangerous caves. People on Steam are talking that there is no reason not to play this game, and I have to agree. Show those monsters the true meaning of extinction. Rock and stone, baby. A short hike. On Steam it has 99% of positive reviews. Yeah, this looks like some kind of a miracle. Games with such ratings do not exist. You know, just like elves or politicians who don't lie. Well, honestly, elves are more common than politicians who don't lie, and games with this rating are even rarer. So this is a gem without a doubt. Here you can hike and climb through the peaceful mountainside landscapes, follow the mock trails or explore the backcountry as you make your way to the summit. Along the way meet other hikers and discover hidden treasures. People who play the game are saying that a short hike is like Breath of the Wild crossbred with Animal Crossing, and the only bad thing about this game is that it ends. And it ends really quickly, about one and a half hours of your life will be made better by this game. But judging by the playtime of casual gamers, I can see that nine hours of gameplay is quite a casual time. That can only mean one thing, people are playing the game more than once, more than twice, more than three times, more than… well, you get the point, I hope. A masterpiece, no doubt. Satisfactory. This game is basically a 3D Factorio, but Factorio is being cocky about it and is never discounted, so let's talk about Satisfactory instead. Here you will defeat nature by building massive factories everywhere. Expand wherever and however you want, without any annoying regulations we have here on Earth, because you are not on Earth anymore. All those animals and plants that live here are scientifically unimportant. They live to serve you and your factory. Here you'll find about 30 square kilometers, which is about 11 square miles of terrain filled with unique flora and fauna. You can recycle everything and make factories out of them. Build beautiful metal constructions instead of ugly nature. Cover the whole surface of the planet with your elegant conveyor belts and train tracks. Make that pathetic natural habitat disappear and make beauty instead. Be a true hero of the industrial era. Dave the Diver this is a casual single-player adventure RPG featuring deep-sea exploration and fishing during the day and sushi restaurant management at night. Here you will dive into the ever-changing blue hole and use a harpoon and other weapons to catch fish and other various unlucky creatures. You will upgrade and forge equipment with collected resources and sushi restaurant profits to prepare for the dangers that lurk in the unknown. Here you will also meet quirky but lovable characters and a story full of jokes and other humorous scenes. The game is a combination of pixel and 3D graphics that provide an interesting and original art style. The adventure is set in the real marine environment of a blue hole, filled with over 200 kinds of sea creatures, so catch and make sushi from all of them. Dyson's Fair Program a new kind of supercomputer has been developed, a machine whose superior artificial intelligence and computing capability will push humanity even further. I guess they built it so they could finally invent vodka without a hangover. Huge computing power is required for a task like that, that's for sure. Only one problem stands in the way. There is not enough energy in the whole planet to feed this machine. So you need to construct the Dyson Sphere, the thing that engulfs the star itself and sucks all of its energy. You know, all that energy will not suck itself, and sucking is a hard job. Ask your sister. Stasis Bone Totem. He will take control of Mac and Charlie, a husband and wife duo who make their living by searching the ocean for salvage. But when you stumble upon an abandoned oil rig in the Pacific Ocean, you uncover a horrific secret, and the evil corporation behind it will do anything to keep it hidden. As you embark on your adventure, you will encounter an immersive narrative filled with spine tingling horror and unexpected twists. Stasis Bone Totem, despite being a psychological horror game, is kinda relaxed because of the point-and-click nature and an interesting puzzles to solve. A cat ever owned you, you know why. Enter the Gungeon. 
This is a bullet hell dungeon crawler following a band of misfits, seeking to shoot, loot, dodge roll and table flip their way by reaching the legendary treasure. The gun that can kill the past. Imagine if you had one, you could kill your stupid decision to become whatever you are right now and become a doctor of ding dongs instead. Be famous, have many fans, it it's not too late you know, you can still change everything. Anyway, you will select your hero or team up in co-op and battle your way to the bottom of the gungeon, surviving a challenging and evolving series of levels filled with the dangerously adorable bosses. Sekiro – Shadows Die Twice Bound to protect a young lord who is a descendant of an ancient bloodline, you become the target of many vicious enemies. When the young lord is captured, nothing will stop you on a perilous quest to regain your honor. Well, except death. Death will stop you many, many times. Keep in mind that Sekiro is the creation of the same developers as the Souls games, and it's meant for people with masochistic tendencies. If you hate yourself, this game is for you. Although I have one piece of advice on how to easily beat this game. It's very simple. Stop being a noob and get good. Noita. This is the game which will allow you to dive straight into adventure without sinking many hours preparing for battle. Noita is a magical action roguelite game set in a world where every pixel is physically simulated. Here you'll fight, explore, melt, burn, freeze and evaporate your way through the procedurally generated world using spells you created by yourself. So, Fetus Delitus and Vodkus Autos of Thinus Eros is an option at last. You will explore a variety of environments ranging from coal mines to freezing wastelands while delving deeper in search for unknown mysteries and use your magic to crush your enemies and manipulate the world around you. The Wolf Among Us this is a gritty, violent and mature thriller based on the award-winning Fables comic books. You'll discover that a brutal bloody murder is just a beginning where every decision can have enormous consequences. And it's not only what you choose to do will affect your story, but when you choose to do it as well. You don't need to know anything about the comics this game is based on, because events in this story are set before the events seen in the first book. And this game gives you an option to beat up practically anyone you don't like. Sadly, you can't import that energy-sucking co-worker of yours in this game, but hey, you can beat him up in real life instead. I mean, if you are stronger than him. If not, <laughs> just smile and blame your genes. Chance of Sanar the review score on Steam of this game is something out of a fairy tale. 98% of positive reviews is not something you see every day. So this adventure puzzle game has a wonderful story. Divided since the dawn of time, the peoples of the tower no longer speak to each other, just like you and your neighbor who dislikes potato salad. But it is said that one day a traveler will find the wisdom to break down the walls and restore the balance. And it's you, obviously. So probably all these people are already doomed. No offense. He'll explain and discover an enchanting world in a colorful poetic setting inspired by the myth of Babel, where men have forgotten their past. You will travel the endless steps of a prodigious labyrinth, uncover ominous secrets and unveil the mysteries of this fascinating universe where ancient languages are both the lock and the key. People are saying that this game has really fun puzzles, beautiful soundtrack and a really interesting captivating story. Manifold Garden. The game looks like a creation of AI, where you prompted it to create something 3D, geometrical and physics-based. But this game is not just beautiful gibberish, it's an actual game with an expansive and visually striking world filled with mind-bending puzzles. He will have to manipulate gravity to gain new perspectives and walk on any visible surface. You will explore structures that repeat infinitely, and also play with photo mode and make some beautiful art for your office. I'm not kidding, your boss, if he's not a gamer, will approve this quite easily, and if he is a gamer, that will be even easier. It seems that the game was made mostly by one man, and that is a huge achievement. People on Steam are saying that you don't need drugs to feel like you are on drugs while playing this game. Also, it's very satisfying to watch all these structures unfold in front of you. Or should I say, unmanifold in front of you. Tony Boy commits tax evasion. He will take control of an adorable turnip who happens to be an absolute menace to society. After failing to pay taxes and getting evicted from your home, you must go on an epic quest to pay back your massive debt to Mayor Onion. Use garden tools to solve plantastic puzzles, meet eccentric vegetables and fruits and take on treacherous fights against animals both big and small, including the capitalist swine. Along the journey, uncover what's spoiling this garden community and rise to tear down the corrupt vegetables government. In other words, you are a lazy shady turnip that wants to evade paying taxes and along the way start the revolution. Some kind of Lenin, I guess. Call of Juarez Gunslinger 
This one and other games of the franchise are probably the most popular and well-known first-person shooter set in the Wild West. Here you will play as the best gunslinger West ever saw and blur the lands between man and myth. This adventure made of memorable encounters will unveil the untold truth behind some of the greatest legends of the Old West. And I'm talking about Billy the Kid, Pat Garrett, Jesse James and Dick Pinison. Oh, come on, who wrote this? Ah, uh, you did. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, with a gun holster tied to your leg, become a ruthless bounty hunter on a journey made of all-out gun battles. Master the art of blasting pistols, shooting rifles and dodging bullets. Metaphorically, right? No, it's exactly like in The Matrix. You can slow time and actually dodge bullets. How cool is that? Also, I really like the narration part of the game. It is trying to hold your attention even when nothing is happening. Let's say you climb the ladder, but at the same time you are listening to the story and that is really cool. People are comparing the style with an action RPG game Bastion, which also has the narration implemented. This is a really great invention and I wish that more games had something like that. Well, with the ability to turn it off, of course. Pilgrims do you know about Samorost and Machinarium? It is another creation of the developers who made these wonderful games. And Pilgrims kinda look like a wonderful game as well. So don't doubt it. I forbid. You'll roam the land as you please and make new friends. Share a love with your fellow travelers and help them complete their little stories your way. How many different solutions can you find? This game is meant for playing, not for beating it. It's the journey, not the destination. Game is packed with 45 achievements and amazing music. And just look at this price. Looks cute and friendly for your wallet. Strange Horticulture you will find and identify new plants, pet your cat, speak to a coven, or join a cult. Use your growing collection to influence the story and unravel dark mysteries. You are a citizen of a charming town surrounded by hag-infested forests and rugged mountains. You are the horticulturist, owner of a local plant store. As a cast of colorful customers come by your shop, you are quickly thrust into an occult mystery stretching back hundreds of years. Explore the lands beyond your store to find new plants, but be careful. The dark woods and lakes are not always friendly to a simple herbalist. You might discover powers beyond your wildest nightmares or lose your mind completely. If you like interesting, non-cliché stuff, it's a must-play for you. My friend Pedro. This is a violent ballet about friendship, imagination and once man's struggle to obliterate anyone in his path. The strategic use of split aiming, slow motion and the old stylish window bridge create one action sequence after another. If I had to describe this game in one word, it would be fluid, intuitive. Well, that's three words, but I was never good at counting. Anyway, this game is pure carnage with amazing features like time slowing and killing enemies with a frying pan. People on Steam are saying that this is a platforming match. Spain, although yellower and with Adidas tracksuit. And you know, Pedro, it's it's not you, it's a talking banana which makes you commit murders. Great game. Kingdom Rush, Tower Defense. This is one of the best rated games on Steam overall. The review score revolves around 97% and that is more than impressive for a simple tower defense game. Well, to call it simple is overstating. It is made so well you will constantly feel rewarded by the decisions you make. So in other words, this is a serotonin factory for your brain. A few years ago I was running an electric scooter rental business in Palanga, one of the resort cities of Lithuania, and this game helped me kill time big time. You know, when you have to sit all day in one place hoping that someone will rent your scooter. That may sound boring, and it was. Well, money was good, but still, the boredom was overwhelming. But when I installed this game on my laptop, I was excited to go to work because I could play it all day, and that was awesome. This game, and honestly, the whole franchise of Kingdom Rush is amazing, and undoubtedly the best tower defense game I have ever tried in my life. I can totally recommend it for you without any doubts. Machinarium this is one of the cutest and coolest puzzle games I have ever played. Although keep in mind that it will truly test your IQ, puzzles here are really hard. Well, they are all crackable, but if you are not a die-hard puzzle fan, it may be a challenging brain spot for you. The world of Machinarium is populated only by robots of various forms and functions. One of the most interesting places in this world is the old, rusty and legendary city where the game takes place. You will have to get rid of wicked robots, save the mayor of the city and also your robot girlfriend. A dream of yours, I know. 
The Planet Crafter. The adventure here starts literally the same as in Subnautica and many other alien planet exploration games. You are falling from space in a tiny capsule that will be your only home and link to humanity. So you manage to land with all your body parts intact and may start exploring unfriendly nature around you. Well, alright, I ain't gonna lie, in The Planet Crafter you ain't gonna find any hostile enemies. It's a very relaxing game where you don't have to worry about creating new weapons to defend yourself from large alien monsters, nothing like that. Here you have to gather minerals and resources to survive, and craft all the tools you'll need in order to fulfill your mission, which is to terraform this planet and make it habitable for humans. And half of humanity has boobs, so j just saying, a noble goal. Also keep in mind that this is not just a crafting game, you will explore old crash ships and ruins and discover a planet full of mystery. If interested, keep in mind that you can play the demo version on Steam for free. Mutazioni or however it is pronounced, a delightfully quirky indie game. You play as Kai, who has traveled to the mysterious town of Mutazioni to care for her sick grandfather. Because you know, like in every game, you want him to leave that workshop for you, right? So you want him dead as soon as possible. I'm kidding of course, and my humor is dark, but this game is obviously for more mature players. Also this is a very short game, you'll complete it in just a few hours. But during your time with the game, you'll speak to the town's bizarre yet delightful creatures, explore the surrounding areas and even grow some crops. The Forgotten City. This game, as a lot of gamers point out, is a Groundhog Day in an ancient city. The mechanic here is simple, everyone around you is dying for unknown reasons and you have to stop it. If you fail, and you will fail more than once, you can just go to the portal and restart the day over and over again until you solve the problem of dying so nobody dies anymore. If you think about it, this is a roguelite game just story based instead of combat, and it's really one of the best adventure games there is. I'm not gonna lie, if you go to Steam you will see the overwhelmingly positive review score. Also, fun fact, this game started as a Skyrim mod a long time ago and it was so well received it became a separate kick-ass game. Subnautica when I first tried to play Subnautica, I had some mixed feelings. I don't really like to craft things in games. Well, I do, but only when it's not the main way to obtain things in general. And all that coral and fish gathering was really, really boring for me. I wanted to explore, and the game prevented me from doing that because I had no means of diving into the depths, and if I tried, I always died. So for me, it took about two actual years to get all the equipment I needed for exploring. I can only imagine that some kid can do that in a day or so, but that's not the way for me. I got bored really quickly every time I turned the game on. But that boredom was eradicated one day when I found some really interesting things deep below that, you know, I couldn't reach. So I finally understood why this game was so hard to play for me. It gave me no motivation to proceed. And then when I finally found one, Subnautica transformed into a beautiful world. So addicting that in a week I spent more time here than in the past two years. And I continued to do that for weeks to come. So for all the new players, just carry on with that boredom part and you will be rewarded. I can without a doubt say that this game is 10 cold as beers out of 10. You have all my recommendations. Although keep in mind that even if it looks so colorful and pretty, it has a lot of horror elements and is not meant for kids. Cult of the Lamb This is a base-building roguelite adventure game where you play as a lamb. But instead of grazing grass all day and looking puffy and cute, you're gonna start your own cult. You will have to collect resources to build new structures and of course you will have to perform dark rituals. But in this randomly generated world you are not the only one having a cult. So you naturally will have to destroy other cult leaders in order to gain more influence over your mindless slaves. The art is cool, the music is great and you will find a variety of activities to do with a simple poop, what's not to love. People on Steam are saying that this game might become repetitive, but it has very positive reviews from over 40,000 players. Slay the Spire more than 100,000 players are recommending this game for you, and so do I. Slay the Spy is a fuse of card games and roguelike titles. Here you can craft a unique deck, encounter bizarre creatures and discover relics of immense power while trying to climb up the ladder. Game features a dynamic deck building, so assemble your deck wisely. Discover hundreds of cards to add to your deck with each attempt at climbing the spire. Select cards that work together to efficiently dispatch foes and reach the top. People on Steam are talking that Slay the the Spy is really addictive, and yeah, I'm seeing a lot of hours played in the comment section. 200 is quite a casual number here, so another game that will keep your virginity safe and sound for a long time. Slime Rancher 
Last time I checked, it held 18th place among the best games on Steam. Yeah, it is ranked higher than Counter-Strike, Half-Life 2, Dishonored or Fallout New Vegas. Incredible! So this is a charming first-person sandbox experience. You will play a plucky young rancher who sets out for a life a thousand light years away from Earth. Each day will present new challenges and risky opportunities as you attempt to amass a great fortune in the business of slime ranching. Collect colorful slimes, grow crops, harvest resources and explore the untamed wilds. Also here you can complete daily requests from other ranchers to get bonus rewards. Earn money to upgrade your stuff, build more corals and expand your ranch. This is a relaxing and fun game, very suitable after a hard work day or as a casual time burner when you have nothing else to do. Well, in that case you can go and make delicious potato salad instead. Ultra Kill. Now we are getting serious. This game is always among the top 20 best rated games on the whole Steam, and that is among tens of thousands of games. It's ridiculous how good this game is. Ultra Kill is a fast-paced, ultra-violent, old-school first-person shooter. It fuses together classic shooters like Quake and modern shooters like Doom Eternal with character action games like Devil May Cry. Here mankind has gone extinct and the only beings left on Earth are machines fueled by blood. And now that blood is starting to run out on the surface and machines are racing to the depths of hell to search for more. Total nonsense, but I like it. People on Steam describe this game quite politely. They say this is a Doom Eternal if it was on crack and also on heroin. And I would add that playing Ultra Kill. It's like eating potato salad, except if you dry it out and snort it. You can try the demo version on Steam if you have any doubts. Signalis. The game is set in a dystopian future where humanity has colonized the solar system. Sounds cool, but the totalitarian regime maintains an iron grip through aggressive surveillance and propaganda. Humanoid androids, known as replicas, live amongst the humans, acting as workers, civil servants and protectors alongside the citizens they are designed to resemble. So that reminds me of Blade Runner, just before the war. The story begins as you awaken from cryostasis in a wrecked vessel. Now stranded on a cold planet, you have to set out on a journey into depths unknown. Keep in mind that this is a horror game, and I don't have jump scares in mind. It will pick your brain psychologically bit by bit. Although on Steam it has an overwhelmingly positive review score left by thousands of people, so it is definitely a hidden gem you should try. Baldur's Gate 3 the discount is not very entertaining, but the game is. Baldur's Gate 3 is for sure the best game I have played since the third Witcher. And overall, in my mind, it takes 6th place among all the games I have ever played in my entire life. That is a sacred spot, knowing that I've been playing video games for the last 35 years. The game has an amazing branching story where your decisions hugely impact the world and your surroundings. Who you are, where you go, who you decide to befriend, kill or bang. Every Everything has a meaning. Dialogues are great, voice actors are the best in the business, freedom of choice is overwhelming, you never know what you will find. You know, once I tried to speak to a frog, I said something probably not very nice and frog tried to kill me, wiped out half of my party. But I befriended a witch who likes to kidnap and imprison simple folk from the village in her dungeon. She sells me nice stuff now. I killed all the druids and made friends with goblins. Then I didn't and everything was different. I played the game three times and I will do that again and again. Baldur's Gate 3 is beyond amazing, 11 cold beers out of 10. And now thank you for watching, have a nice day and I'll see you next time.